The late round affordablest wide receiver I'm putting my stamp on this year is Curtis Samuel, and there's a number of reasons why. First of all, I love that their defense is going to be historically bad because it's going to set up for some incredible passing game scripts all year. They lose Luke Keekley, James Bradbury, so many defensive players um, on that side of the ball in free agency, and they don't replenish the talent uh, in free agency. The the coaching staff and the organization showed that they realized that their defense sucks by drafting defense with all seven of their picks in the draft. But I'll be the millionth person to say it uh, during a COVID shortened off season. Rookies, especially on the defensive side of the ball, are probably going to struggle. Shout out to Adam Levitan for tweeting this out. Their uh, starters average age on the defensive side of the ball projects to be 23.45, which would be the youngest in the past decade. And now we bring in Matt Rule, who was at Baylor as the head coach, and Joe Brady, who was just at LSU with that incredible season last year as the offensive coordinator. And shout out to Sigmund Bloom. Of course, there's some assumption of rational coaching here, but I am really excited for this coaching staff to kind of take this offense to the next level. Um, And with Curtis Samuel, we've already kind of seen it. I think it was a really important Roto World blurb. Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator, had this to say about Samuel. A guy you can utilize all around the field and get the ball in his hands and good things happen. We're getting the ball in space and I'm excited for him to take the next leap. This is a guy, Curtis Samuel, that has 4.3140 speed, which is the 100th percentile according to Player Profiler, 91st percentile speed score, and we're looking for signs of things to come, and Samuel has already shown us that. He had a good rookie year. He started to come on strong towards the end, I should say, before a nasty ankle injury cut it short, but how did he bounce back? 494 receiving yards in his second year, and then 627 last year, in addition to 130 rushing yards and a touchdown on the ground. Why is that important? Because that is the type of player that Curtis Samuel is and has shown us. He had 1,249 receiving yards in his collegiate career. Okay, that's not that impressive. But he had 1,286 rushing yards. He had more rushing yards than receiving yards. And if we can get a coaching staff that understands that and can utilize him properly, now we are in business. And I think that's exactly what we have. We have a dual threat player that was not utilized properly last year, um, you know, running the deep routes, the clear out routes um, with an inaccurate Kyle Allen. Now we have a guy that has more rushing upside than he even showed last year, more upside around the line of scrimmage uh, with high percentile passes, and he should be able to take advantage better of his deep balls as well with that speed. Firmly believe he can do that with a better quarterback such as Teddy Bridgewater. Um, So you look at all of that, and then the icing on the cake is the ADP, right? Um, In 88 FFPC best ball drafts over the past two weeks, which granted is tight end premium, and you only have to start two wide receivers, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, 14th, 15th round turn. But what we're really looking at is 168.9 overall and and for sure wide receiver 55. Ideally and more realistically, you're looking at taking this guy like late 8th, 9th, and if you're lucky, the double digit rounds. But anywhere right there, I see Samuel as a player that's definitely taking a leap. Everybody was in on him last year. I wasn't as much because, of course, we love DJ more, but there's more meat on the bone in this offense. I think Samuel takes advantage, and I'm smashing draft around that ninth, 10th if he's still there. And if I'm getting aggressive to make sure I'm getting him, I'm okay taking him in the late eighth. Let's get it.